welcome back to the Citizen Channel. We're all staying safe and well. And our second up and ultimate programme watch of the season. We've got an FA Cup programme to look through. And we've got a glorious, as I'm recording this, because, uh, yeah, I've just been back a couple of days, uh, Champions League programme to go through as well. So please join with the penultimate programme watch of the 22-23 season. The second second part of our wonderful travel, of course. We're going to have a look at this thing. Which, uh, yeah, the FA Cup final programme, yes, a, a massive, bulky, bulky tone. If you switch it over, you've got uh, all, the old 10 bob pep on the other side, haven't we? So we've got our pep, and obviously it's upside down as well, so you get half of it one way and then half of it the other way. And there are, there are sort of, it's not just United, one half city, sort of the other half, it mainly is, but there's all bits and pieces mixed in as well. So we're going to have a look at this today for a, a princely sum yes princely sum of 10 pound but yeah was it worth it well uh, yeah i'll say it was now yeah definitely yeah, a lot to go at some interesting stuff uh some funny stuff in the united bit as you'd expect but uh, there you go we'll have a look at that today please if you're new to the channel push that subscribe button push bell notifications great job you on board everything city of course past present and as long as i keep going that's for sure after this season eh, it's uh it's glorious, isn't it? How do, how do we get better? Well, we just do it again, don't we? Simple as that. Or go go a little bit better as well. Why not? Anyway, so join me, please. Even give us a thumbs up, guys. It's uh, obviously the programme watches. Perhaps don't get as many likes as some of the other vlogs, but uh, if you can do that for me, I'm trying to get about, about I'll go for 20. Get me to 20, guys, if you can. That would be appreciated for this little vlog. Right, it's 116 pages. Yes, yeah, so that's not bad, is it? There's only about 17 or 18 pages of what I'd call ads and promotions. So it's not too bad at all. Uh, there's a couple of taglines, as you can see. With the United one, it's got uh, this is the one. Well, it probably wasn't. And, of course, as we did with the Pep's tagline, you've got seize the time. And we certainly seized the time, didn't we? There's no doubt about that. There's a little B on it as well. little B on It'll be in the corner. It'll Manchester, it'll Manchester be a little on the. Obviously, it could be Brentford, couldn't it? Who knows? Who knows who, who it could be? Well, there you go. Plenty of big pages all left when you look at the ads and promos for all the club stuff. So we'll start from this side. We'll start going through what's in it from the old Ten Bob Pep side, if you like the that half of it, because as I say, it gets to halfway and then obviously it switches over. So we'll go back to the Pep side. Of course, a bit more of a United slant on this one. And, of course, that United slant is replicated for a City slant on the other side when we get to Pep. Anyway, Eric, old Eric wants to write a new piece of history into the club. Well, he did well there, mate. He did that, didn't he? I think the 12 to 13 second goal did that for him. So, well done, mate. You've accomplished that. There's an article on Casimiro who apparently was the happiest man alive when joining United last August. He probably saw his wage slip, I'm not, I'm not overly sure. Uh, I hope he was still smiling at 5pm after this game anyway, but uh, perhaps he wasn't. And he picked out four games of the season where he was at his best. I did notice just a couple of them where he was saying he, was, he kept giving the ball away but winning him back. So uh, that's at your best, fair enough. The football genius Wes, that, well, that was, that is, Wes Brown, gives his lowdown on the United squad, little pen pen picks and little comments apparently he says Harry Maguire has always done what's required of him when asked obviously not much was ever required then was it and Wes absolutely loves and he mentions the word love twice uh, that big lummox up front there veg horse who apparently apart from goals uh, which he could do with more of yep yeah, yeah, we can all do with that every other aspect of his game has been absolutely fit for a United player uh, not much expect expected then was there there's a QA and a with uh, who West Brown calls Captain Marvel. Of course, uh, you don't need to be we call it, better known as the rat to us. A piece on the Women's Show Warrior. I thought for a moment it was a bit of a city thing snuck in with Cole Palmer. But, of course, it was some bloke called Rashford who I thought was a politician, actually. I didn't know he was a footballer. Jaden Sancho talks about playing in a cage when he was a kid. Uh, not in move, not in, not actually gone up in the world now, has he? Uh, playing at the swamp, but uh, we do get a nice image of him, image of him in a city tracky top being cuddled by Pep. So that's that, that's nice. Gary Neville talks about Wembley as a fan and a player. Yeah, I think he missed the last couple of United FA Cup finals through injury, unfortunately. But he's uh, talking from a, a strong standpoint there. Adam Maguire's eyes are on the prize in another Q and A uh, session with old old Slabhead. An item on both managers who are apparently football crazy well who'd have guessed that 
This is how it feels, looks back and relives some City United classics over the years. Yes, and uh, they've been uh, fair on this one. The three wins, wins each and a draw. 1957, United 4, City 1. 1971, City 3, United 3. 1974, United 0, City 1. I was there. 1989, City 5, United 1. I was there. 1994, United 5, City 0. I was there. 2009, United 4, City 3. I missed that one. And 2011, United 1, City 6. I couldn't get a ticket for that one either. Well, never mind. I was at some of them. So three wins each and a draw. A perfect place to make memories. Looks back at 100 years of Wembley, as it, re, as it of course, celebrates its 100 years. And a guy called Sir Arthur Elvin bought Wembley to save it from demolition. Yes, it's only been used for an FA Cup final. It's only been used for a Scotland-England international every other season. So, of course, with that lack of use uh, let's knock it down that was the thoughts but Mr Sir Arthur Elvin dipped into his pocket and bought it and uh, stuck a greyhound track round it so that helped finance the thing while football wasn't around uh, so a lack of games uh, yeah all the irony eh? every every other every week there seems to be a game now isn't there but that's how it is whistle test there's a QA and a with referee Paul Tierney, as you'd expect who lives in Wigan now but apparently he moved from Belfast when he was aged 11 the Culture Clubs is a piece on the Manchester music scene with all the obvious Smiths and Oasis. The double middle pages features a graphic of both clubs rolled to Wembley. And then we flip over. So we're going to flip over. So I'm going to flip over 10 bob to the, to the real pep, to the, to the proper pep. Uh, nice, nice artwork. I like the artwork. Will this make the top, top 10 covers of the season? I'm not too... I doubt it. <laughs> but uh, I do like... It's like... It's like a picture, but arty picture. I don't know. There's probably a name for it, but I'm not an artist, so I don't know. Anyway, we'll flip over to the Pepper, who claims he is the luckiest, luckiest manager in the world. Well, I can't disagree with that one. A Q&A with the Nordic Meat Shield, of course. Legend Paul Lake, this time, uh, gives his thoughts on the City squad. He classes Rodri as the best defensive midfielder in world football and his ability around the box to score with his left or right foot. He certainly does. A Q&A with Captain Gundo, a special on KDB. From part to arts, has a look at, yes, Johnny, Johnny Stones. He looks back at his early start at Barnsley, the Barnsley Beckenbauer, of course, how he broke into the first team squad at only eight, or, or say 18, 16 years old. Micah gets where Castroil wouldn't. Richards writes a piece on Manchester Derby from his own personal memories. A good piece on the history of football in Manchester. And as I started to read it, I thought this has got to be Gary James, and it certainly was. A Manchester FA Cup 11 of all time has a red-tinted balance. So not very fair on this one. You've got nine uh, nine reds and six blues. And you've got Ferg included in the nine reds is Fergie as the manager. I will take umbrage with that one. The City guys, Troutman, Book Company, Yaya, KDB and Silver. Uh, it wasn't based on football inability though it was like uh, something might have happened that a player might have kick-started something so yeah, I know that because it's got Lee Martin in so I mean if Lee Martin of United is in the in the best 11 uh, in FA, FA Cup finals uh, it's got to be something it's got to be based not solely on football ability let's be honest about it of course it was Lee Martin's goal who uh, helped Ferguson win his first FA Cup trophy and start the dynasty, really, wasn't it? Manchester's Got Talent looks at Fletcher Moss Rangers. I've always I've, I've played football on Fletcher Moss. I played rounders at Fletcher Moss uh, back in the old days when I was a kid. But, uh, yeah, it looks at Fletcher Moss Rangers, who I think have provided a bit more talent for United than City, that's for sure. But I'm sure, I'm sure the odd City players snuck in, uh, of course, at uh, more recently known for Rashford coming from Fletcher Moss Rangers, aren't they? Owen Hargreaves, okay, gives his rundown on the final in a QA. and a uh, I turned over the pages very quickly on that one. There's more Gary James, yes, uh, and more bonus on City. The City 1904 trophy lift on the United 1909 FA Cup wins. Uh, Sheik, of course, bought that cup, bloody oil money, eh? Uh, and it does that. Uh, I've seen it. It resides at the National Football Museum in, in Manchester City Centre at the moment. So I'll go and see it if you get a chance. I love, I love old things like that. Well, I'm old myself, aren't I? Happy Anniversary looks at three FA Cup finals from the past. Three classics that I've read about many times, watched highlights, etc., etc., where possible. Of course, the 1923 one is more, more known for the white horse on the pitch. Bolton 2, West Ham 0. The 1953, uh, I knew particularly the Stanley Matthews final, but it's a Morton St. Matthews final. Final, it was classed as that was Blackpool 4, Bolton 3. 
Of course, the classic uh, giant killing act, 1973 Sunderland 1, Lees 0, where the Sunderland goalkeeper Montgomery was unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Just watch some of the highlights of that. There's just one double save he makes, which uh, even better than I could do when I was playing. And that takes us to City and United's road to Wembley. Some stats just before that uh, that we talked about. Facts on the qualifying rounds and early rounds. Just a couple of quirky stats. You know, I like the quirky stats. The extra preliminary round uh, featured Earlham nil, Avro 4. Now, this was special in that if you had the two teams named, that was their total name. It wasn't Earlham United or Avro City. It was just Earlham against Avro. So there's just nine letters uh, combined for these two North West Counties Premier League clubs. And that represented the joint shortest combined names of any tie in FA Cup history. Now, that's a joint shortest. So there are others, or there's another one at least, or others, but they didn't tell us that they were. So I was a bit disappointed. I'll have to probably find out if I could be bothered one day. Another little quirky fact, yeah, in round two, Newport County got beat by Derby County at Newport 2-1. You probably remember that one. But did you know that it was only the fifth ever county versus County FA Cup tie. So they got only the fifth time it ever happened. The county had played a county. And that's it. That's it, guys. We get to the middle bit again with City and United's road to Wembley. Uh, and yes, yeah, it's steep, £10. But if you, if you look at what's inside it, I think the semi final programme was a smaller, uh, half the price, but uh, similarly done with upside down uh, feature. You know, one, one manager, one manager player, wasn't it, on the uh, Sheffield United City semi final? But a good read for both sets of fans. You can still buy it. I mean, I, I, you probably know if you watch any of my vlogs, I lost my, <laughs> I lost my copy. I had to buy it again. That's why I'm a little bit later doing this this uh, review of the program than I probably would have been. I'd, I'd normally be doing this before the uh, Champions League final. It would have been out before the Champions League final, which it all ended well anyway, didn't it? So we're all right. But uh, yeah, you can get it. The cheapest I've seen is about sixteen pound, uh, including postage, on a, a certain well-known. Uh, website uh, that you can buy buy it now, or you can bid for it a little bit cheaper. But you don't don't pay more than sixteen because that's more or less what you can get it for. So not too bad. It probably will come down a little bit in price. I'm not too sure. I've, I've looked at Wembley. I can't see they're selling it. I've looked at Reach Sports. I can't see that they're selling it. But just keep your eyes peeled because it is a a really good weed a read weed really good read and a, a good uh, memento of course of a, a wonderful day as we completed our second part of our famous 22-23 season travel. Let me know what you thought, guys. If you had got it yourself, had a good look through. I mean, I read bits of my lads on the way home from Wembley because I've lost mine. But, uh, yeah, so I read up again over the couple of weeks since since the final. Uh, yeah, very good. Very good indeed. And it's nice to see Gary James in there as well. A lot, a lot of filler. I mean, obviously, stuff like the Micah Richards stuff is, is we're not being told anything we don't know. But, uh, yeah, very good. Very good. Very big. It's make, make a good weapon. Get your cracks on the head with this one, you'll be all right. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts, let me know your comments, and please join me for the Champions League. We'll have a look at that one. Champions League program, of course, which is up on the wall there in the background. And we will be doing the top 10 program covers of the season awards. So let's see who gets that one. I don't think City will get will get number one spot. We might get one or two in the top 10, but uh, we'll look at all the away programs. Uh, as I say, I, I probably a little special mention. There's, of course, we've had this one. We had the semi final. We've got the Champions League one, but I, I can't. Looking at them, I can't see them getting into the final set anyway. But uh, we'll have a look back at those as well. So join me for that. Plus, lots of history stuff. Lots of looking back at 22, 23 with a history of it and quizzes, etc. So stay tuned, guys. Lots, lots to come before it all kicks off again. Thanks for watching. To me again. That's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, please. Come on, city. Bye for now.